Okay, team. So let's start with first point is routing versus switching. Okay. Uh, we have decided to go through very basics. Uh, like first, let's uh, clear some basic point. Uh, I, I I hope you all already know, but let's go through the basics. So maybe we pre any question something, or maybe we'll get some clarity before moving to advanced topics. Okay. So if if we talk about routing versus switching, so I'm not talking about switching means like moving packet from one interface to another interface. I'm purely talking about layer two device versus layer three device. Okay, so routing, as you know, right? The route routers or layer three device will do routing, moving packets from one to one network to another network. Okay, that is fine. One interface to another interface, that's fine. But the uh, most important talk point here is moving packets from one network to another network. Okay, so and and switches. So how switches will work? It's like excuse me, Vishal. Uh, Vishal, yeah. are we recording this session? Yes, yes, we are recording. All right, thank you. So if if you talk about layer two switches, uh, we just uh, checked about layer three uh, device routers, right? Uh, how the routers was like the moving packets from one network to another network means one interface to another interface. So it means the routers each interface belong to a separate separate networks. Okay. Now if you if you talk about switches, so switches will work differently, completely uh, different uh, than router. Okay. So in, in switch, it is not about one network to another network. It's all about one interface to another interface. Okay. So let's say, for example, we have one switch here. Okay. So in this switch, let's say we have two interfaces. Okay. So it is layer, layer two, purely layer two switch. Okay. Now in this switch, if I connect two PC. Okay. Now, as you know, each and every device in network will have some IP address. Okay. And then they have some uh, layer two address as well. So let's assume uh, my IP address is one. I know it's like 32 bit IP address, but I'm just, for example, I'm just giving here as the IP address one and IP address two. Okay. And I'm, I'm giving make address A and make address B. Correct. So this is layer two addresses. This is layer two addresses. Okay. A and B, it is your layer two addresses, which assign to device. And uh, it is hard coded address. Like whenever the device uh, uh, has manufactured, right? That time only the uh, organization or whatever vendor to take this device, they assign this MAC address. So it's a hard coded address. So basically, your MAC address will be 48 bits. Okay. Your MAC address will be 48 bits and will be hard coded address. Now, your IP address is L3 address and it is always 32 bits. Okay. It is not a hard coded address, it is a logical address. Okay. Whenever you configure any network devices, you will going to assign it manually. Okay. Now let's let's focus right now on the layer two switch. How uh, so? Right now we are discussing about how layer two works versus layer three. So as, as per layer two topology or layer two diagram, they don't care about the IP addresses. Okay, they will not uh check ip addresses so they will don't care anything about logical address or you can say layer three address i will always focus on layer two address make address whenever i'll communicate on through layer two device so that's why it's called transparent switching transparency means both end host or pc a or pc b okay or you can say pc one or pc two okay they will not be aware of that is there any device or in between or no Okay, they will just uh, consider they both are directly connected. Okay, so let's say I'm starting communication from PC1 to PC2. So whenever I PC1 will initiate communication to PC2, I will simply create one packet. Okay, in this packet, uh, I will, uh, you know, uh, sorry, uh, I will just add uh, information about layer two and layer three. So in both, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, in both contents, there will be source and destination. Okay. Now in layer three, my source will be one. My destination is two. Okay. Now in the layer two, my source make address is a. My source make address, sorry destination make address is b. So whenever this frame will arrive on the switch, so how switch will think here? Okay, we have to check regarding switch. So switch will first of all to start a learning process, right? So what what switch will learn? It will learn the make address source make address. Okay, switch will never care about in specifically layer two switch will never care about IP addressing. 
they don't care. They just care about the layer two frame. Okay, they just care about layer two source and destination MAC address. So first process will start as a learning process. Okay, it will start learning. So how it will start learning? The switch will say, okay, your your friends source maker source maker address is A, and you belong to this port number one. So let's say this is port number one. This is port number two. Okay, so switch will store this information into MAC address table, and then say, okay, in future, in, if I need to communicate with MAC address A, because switch is not aware about IP address, they will not check any IP header. They will just check the layer two header. So they will store in the MAC address table that in future, or let's say this is my MAC address table. My this is my interface. Let's say for example interface, and this is my MAC address. Okay. Now for example, I'm I'm arriving on port number one. So it will start learning process. It will say okay, the MAC address A belongs to port number one, and then we'll say the destination. Okay, so destination is D. Okay, now destination D is not there in MAC address table. Okay, if you see, we have only one information. It's saying this my port number one, the MAC address belongs is A. So I don't have any destination MAC address B, sorry, D. So what I'll do, I'll just start flooding. In flooding, what I'll do, I'll just send this frame to all the interface. Okay, except the interface which this frame was arrived. Okay, so I'm not going to send this frame back to Port number one, but I will send frame to all interfaces. Let's say I have multiple interfaces in my switch. Okay, so I will send this uh, frame to port number two. Let's say port number three. Let's say port number four. I will send all the all the all the ports this frame. And whenever this PC two will receive this information, okay, this frame. So what PC two will reply? PC two will reply with whatever we are requesting. Let's say for example we are requesting ICMP. We have started initiating the ping. Okay, so in that case, PC2 will say, okay, my dest I have arrived, received one frame, and this destination MAC address is D. Right. So, yeah, sorry, B, not D, but B. So the PC will say, okay, my uh, the destination MAC address of this particular uh, PC, sorry, the particular frame is uh, matching with my own MAC address. So its frame is for me. Right. So PC will say, okay, as a layer two, I'm okay. This frame is for me only. Correct. Now this PC will say, okay, let me just remove frame because as a layer two, it's reaches destination. So let me check as a layer three. What is the IP address of the destination? Right. So now after removing the layer two frame, uh, the PC left with uh, layer three information, or you can say the network layer information. The network layer information is saying the destination IP address is two. So PC will say, okay, uh, yeah, that is also correct. I'm only two. Right. Now let me remove this information as well because as a layer two, as a layer three, both this frame or the packet, whatever it might be, is arrived as a destination. Correct. Now what this PC will say at the end, okay. Now I need to check what request has come. Right. So sometimes let's say maybe the request has come as a uh, HTTPS or maybe SSH or telnet. This kind of application request, right? So PC will say, okay, I'm removing layer two information, I'm removing layer three information. And now as application wise, they're requesting for ICMP. So it is ICMP for in in answer to this ICMP, I need to reply with ICMP reply. The PC will also start creating the same information, creating the packet for you know to reply the answer. So it will start with the uh, source and destination again. Right, so this is let's say layer two and this is layer three. Now source MAC address will be now it will be PCB and destination MAC address is PCA. Correct. Now as a layer three, my source IP address is two and my destination IP address is one. So it is completely opposite, or you can say reverse what frame was arrived. Right. Now whenever this frame comes to switch, okay, whenever this frame comes to switch. The switch will immediately learn this MAC address, right? Because once the switch was flooding, right, that time it is not learned because switch was not aware of what, like where this exactly the destination B is resides, right? So in that case, what will happen? I'm I'm just learning first process. I'm learning the MAC address of particular frame. So now I store. Let's say in order 
to reach destination B as a MAC address, my port number will be 2. Correct. Now, whenever switch receive the frame, it will need to check the destination MAC address. What exactly a layer 2 device will do, right? So it will say, okay, my destination is A. So let me check with my MAC address table where exactly A is. Right? So the switch is okay. In order to reach A, I need to send frame to port number 1. So switch will immediately send this frame from port number 2 to port number 1. And this will be sent to PC1. Right? So this is basically called transparent switching. Okay, switch is not aware about uh, layer three information. It's just aware about layer two. Okay, and this this will work with the uh, same network. Okay, so what does it mean by same network? So let me just uh, discuss with some same uh, the belong to same network. Let's say for example, my PC there is a two PC PC one PC two again same thing one IP address one make it as A it is B. So let's discuss about uh, MAC address. Okay, so MAC address, as I said, is 48 bits and it's always like uh, uh, hard coded. Okay, and it will be always in hexadecimal format. So if I if I talk about hexadecimal format, then the MAC address, let's say AA, one point AA. Okay, it will go up to 48 bits. Okay, and let's say if it's BB. So this is your 48 bit MAC address. It is only for layer two. Okay. So this layer, this MAC address will never go beyond the layer three boundary. So how this PC will come to know if we are in the same network or different network. So that's why we are assigning the logical addresses, right? So let's say, for example, if this PC has 10.1.1 and this PC has 10.2.2 and my slash notation is eight. Okay. So, as, as you know, in IP addressing scheme, we have host and network persons. Okay. So, if, if you know slash 8 or this is 32 bit IP address, so each and every octet will have the 8 bits. Correct. Each and every octet will have the 8 bits. Right. So, in 8 bits, it's, if we have 4 octets, means 32 bits, we have 32 bits IP address. Correct. Now, in 32 bits, we have divided this address into network and host portion. Okay. So, when let's say in the class A, this is 10 belong to class A slash H. So, it means this is basically say, telling the slash notation is basically telling which portion of your IP address is the network portion and which of the portion is the host portion. So, slash 8 means my first 8 bits will be the network portion and all the rest will be the host portion. So it means dot 10 is my network portion and 1.1.1 1 .1 and 2.2.2 .2 .2 .2 is my first portion. Okay. So if my network portion is the same with my destination. Okay. So let's say my network portion is 10 here and another PC also having this 10 network. Right. So it means we are belong to the same network. We, we are not belonging to different, different networks. We are in the same networks. So, in order to communicate within the same networks, two PC will no need any kind of, you know, the layer three gateway or layer three boundary or, or, or anything like that. Okay, or you can say exit point, exit point of your network. So, they can immediately start send, uh, you know, frame and packets to each other without using help of default gateway. So, whenever we talk about a same network reachability, so what will help us? A MAC address and layer two transparent switch okay so we are just here we are just talking about switching only we are not talking about routing we are talking about within the same network communication correct if i'll say if let's say if i'll change the network here if i'll i'll say 11 okay so if i say 10 uh, and then 11 so here if you see in my network person i have different different values my network person is not matching between these two pc right because one is saying 10, 1, 1, a, another is saying 11 dot 2 dot 2 dot 2 slash 8. Okay, and, and as per slash notation 8, uh, we are having a first octet is a network portion and all these are the host portion, right? 
So in that case, my PC will think we are not in the same network. Why? Because I am the 10 slash 8 and my destination is 11 slash 8. So in order to reach different network, right? Because both are in the different, different networks. So in order to reach different network, first of all, I will need to reach my default gateway. Or you can say layer 3 device, not a layer to switch. Layer to switch will help us only to make communication between two hosts which belong to same network. Okay, and the layer 3 device comes into picture where we need to make communication between two different different networks. Or you can say different different clients which belong to different network. So your 10 slash 1 and 10 slash 11, sorry, 11.2 is in different different network. So even if you put here switch, if you connect this two PC with this switch. Okay, if you're putting one, one layer to switch, let's say this is layer to switch because right now we're talking about layer to transparent switching. Okay. So even if you put switch here, these two PC will not able to communicate, even though it's directly connected, maybe it might be they are learning the mechanics of each other, whatever no case, but they will not be able to communicate. Why? Because as per PC one, if I'm trying to reach 11, then my destination is belong to different network. In order to reach anything which be belong to different network, which is not part of my network, then first of all, I need to send traffic to my default gateway router. Okay, so here, what will happen? Router will come into picture, or you can say layer three device will come into picture. So let's say I'm just putting the router here. So I will say, this is my layer three device. Now I'm talking about the layer three router. Okay. So what will happen? Let's say, for example, I'm connecting two interfaces. As I said, like, if we're talking about layer three device, then my routers, each and every interface belong to a different, different network. That's why we always call the router will help us to make communication between two different networks. Correct. So for example, I'm giving IP address to these two interfaces. So let's say I'm giving IP address from uh, left side routers interface to 10.10.1.2, just for example. And here I'm giving 10.2.2. Let's say uh, let's say 100. For example, 100 slash 8. Okay. So as per my router, the routers where each interface belong to a separate network. So router will say, okay, I have two directly connected network. One is 10 slash 8. One is 11 slash 8. So now what will happen here? I will assign this address, whatever address I'm configuring to router, I'm assigning this address to my PC and host as a default gateway. Default gateway will help us to make, or you can say to reach uh, our, sorry, reach destination, which is not belong to our network or which is not, not uh, within our network, which is a different network. Okay, so let's say I'm assigning a dot, dot, uh, two here as a default gateway and dot hundred here as a default gateway. So dot hundred here as a default gateway. Correct. Now how the process will start again? So PC will say, okay, I need to reach eleven dot two dot two dot two, which is not belong to my network. So first of all, I need to reach my default gateway. Correct. So now the PC will initiate traffic. So let's say again, I'm creating a source and destination for layer two and layer three. Tim, if you have any question or something, you can just uh, ask me. Okay, you can stop me and ask me. Feel free to ask if any question or you need to repeat anything. Okay. So I will create a, a layer two and layer three source and destination. So let's say my source is uh, a ten dot one dot one dot one. I just put one, and my destination is dot two. Okay, two dot two dot two. And my layer two as a source, I will just say source is my let's say make address a. And destination is my MAC address. Which MAC address should I put here as a destination? Okay, it will be the default gateway MAC address. Why be by default gateway? Because as I said, like layer two information will never go beyond the layer three. Okay, so let's say if I my MAC address here is Z1 and Z2 on both routers interface, right? So what this PC is thinking is I'm I'm a source dot one and destination is dot two, which belongs to different network. 
So I cannot use MAC address. I cannot ask MAC address for their particular destination directly because it is not within my same network. It is not my layer two network. So if something is within my layer two network, then only I can request for MAC address for that particular MAC address. If it's different network, I cannot. First of all, I need to request to my router or my default gateway or whatever it may be, or maybe layer three switch. Okay, we can put a layer three switch in place of router as well and assign the MAC IP address as a to use to use as a default gateway. Correct. So first of all, I need to reach my default gateway, my exit point, my exit point of the network. And then that particular device or particular exit point will help me to reach the destination. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just put the MAC address as a Z1. I'm not putting me. I'm not putting my destination MAC address. Why? Because it's not belong to my network. It's not or not within my network. Okay. So this is my format. So if you notice uh, in the previous slide, uh, the format was like, you know, for layer two transparent switching or for same within the same network, the format was a little bit different. The source is the same as I'm, I'm putting A and the source dot one as IP address layer three, correct? But the destination was the same as a D destination two, but I, I was using MAC address of, of also for that particular dot two, okay? So in the destination, I was putting a IP address and MAC address, which belong to same device. Why? Because it was in this within the same network, within the same layer to network. But right now I'm going beyond my network. I'm not communicating within my network. So I need to put the MAC address for my gateway or you can say my layer three device. Okay. So I'm putting Z1, Z1, whatever. Now I will, I will send this uh, packet to my router. And then router will help me to get this packet coming from this particular interface and we will send this packet to another interface. Right, so this is called routing. Okay, this is called routing. Taking packets from one interface or you can say one network. We, uh, sometimes we like, you know, we get confused like uh, if we say on the layer to switch, it's one interface to another interface and here also is one interface to another interface. Because in switch by default, all interface belong to a same broadcast domain, or you can say same layer two domain. But in router, it's different. Each and every interface belong to a different different broadcast domain, or you can say big different different networks. Okay, by default, layer two switch belong to same network, all the interfaces. Okay, and routers into each interface belong to a different different networks. So that's why whenever router receive this packet, router will check the routing table and immediately take this in. Okay, this network is directly connected to me. Right. So I will just send this this packet to the destination network. And then destination network will and, and then I will send, sorry, then I will send this packet to this particular interface and then switch will take care. How switch will take care? If switch knows about the MAC address, it will immediately send to the particular interface. If switch you don't know about this MAC address, it will just do flooding, correct? And based on flooding, switch will learn the MAC address. In, in reply, switch will learn the MAC address and store in the MAC address table. Okay. So this is uh, something like, uh, uh, you can say layer three or routing versus layer two switching. Okay, so how layer two switches will forward the frame. It will always think on source and destination MAC address. It will never check the uh, you know, layer three information or source and distance IP address. Okay, and layer three, uh, sorry, router or layer three switch or whatever layer three devices, it will always check. Okay, initially it will also check for the destination MAC address, right? Because see, whenever this packet has been arrived on this router interface here, right? Let's say for example, this interface. So first of all, this MAC address should belong to this router interface. Let's say my destination MAC address for this packet is Z2. And I'm, um, this packet is arriving on this particular interface. So the router will immediately drop this packet. Why? Because your destination MAC address is Z2, right? And you are arriving on Z1 MAC uh, interface. So I, it is not belong to me. I will just simply drop the packet. Okay. So let's uh, discuss something more on basic packet flow. This is a this is a, like you know routing uh, versus switching. So how switch will think? How router will think? Switch will always check on the MAC address, right? And in MAC address world, there is no kind of concept of network or separate networks, or you can say the assigning different different network and host portion. The MAC address is completely fixed, 48 bit, right? 
and uh, makers will never uh, identify this PC below to same uh, network or same domain or is different network. Okay, the network layer, the IP address, or we can say 30 bit IP address or logical address will help us to identify if my destination belongs to a same network, which I mean, or it's a different network. Okay, if same network, I do not need to reach default gateway. I do not need any routing device or router. I can directly, you know, request uh, uh, ICMP or whatever request, like SSH and net or whatever application request, I, I can directly request and based on MAC address only. With the help of MAC address and layer to switches, okay, the communication will happen. But if we need to communicate uh, from a different network, then we will need router layer to device. It is as we discuss uh, router each interface belong to a different different network. Correct. So now one one thing more I I want to discuss uh, uh, about ARP. Okay, address resolution protocol. So let's say I have one PC. This is my switch, and again, this is my PC. Okay, and my MAC address is A, and this is MAC address B. Okay, so how this how this PC will come to know that okay, in in order to send traffic to dot two, let's say my my IP address dot one here, my IP address is dot two here. So how this PC will come to know that uh, in order to reach dot two, I need to send traffic as a destination MAC address B. Correct, because PC does not have the information. Right. So what will happen? The ARP will come into picture here. In this scenario, the ARP will come into picture. So whenever, let's say, for example, I'm opening any, uh, let's let's take example of ICMP only. Okay, so from PC1, I'm just opening an application uh, which can help me to initiate ICMP traffic. So let's say CMD. Okay, so I'll start pinging 1.1, let's say, dot two, sorry, because we are using this example, not that it will be complete IP address. So we are just giving dot two example. So I'll open PC one. I'll I'll go uh, CMD. I'll just start pin dot two. So how this PC will come to know that I need to reach dot two because we are telling, correct? We are we are guiding our PC. Let's see. I I want to communicate with dot two. So that's why PC come to know. Okay, I need to reach two. But what about layer two? PC don't know layer two. Right. So PC is okay. Dot two. In order to reach dot two, let me check my MAC address table or ARP table. Okay. So PC will say, okay, let me check. Uh, is there any entry to reach dot two? Is there any MAC address uh, assigned to our uh, dot two or no? If I have MAC address, as we discussed earlier, I will immediately create a packet source and destination as a layer two source and destination as a layer three, and I will send to switch. But if I don't have anything uh, regarding dot two, so what I'll do, I'll just initiate the R request. Okay, so what will be the R request? So let's say, for example, this is my R packet, what I'm just now creating. To get the MAC address of dot two, right? So I'll say I'm the source dot one. Let's say this is layer three, and this is layer two. So I'm I'm a source one, and I need to reach destination two. Okay. So what I need is I need R. Okay. I need R for what? See, R is not a layer three packet. Okay. Even it's not using any any kind of IP. Uh, services or not not layer three information. I'm just giving you one example. So this is all are encapsulated within the R packet. Though. Okay. See this all the source and destination is not. I'm not creating. I'm not creating this IP header. No, R will never use IP protocol. It will immediately use its own protocol R, and then I will use frame directly. Okay. So inside the R. Uh, query what I'll do I'll just say uh, I'm the source one destination is two what I need is I need the MAC address so I'll say my source MAC address is A and my destination MAC address I don't know anything so this I'll put FFA layer two unique universal broadcast address okay so all F all F is not single F it's 48 bits all one 48 bits one so whenever you say 48 bit runs means your MAC address start from FF, column, column, FF, FF, we go till 48 bits. Okay. So now this is our query. I will just simply send this our query to switch. Correct. So switch will say, okay, uh, your destination MAC address is uh, FF, FF. See in the layer two, see after this R, I will have layer two frame. So in layer two frame also, my MAC address source MAC address is A and my destination's MAC address is FFM because I don't know destination, correct? 
So switch will say, okay, your destination is FFF means you even don't know where you want to send traffic. So I need to flood the traffic. Correct. So what switch will do? Switch will flood the traffic to all the interfaces, but not the interface from where the packet or frame. Sorry, the packet is always considered as a layer three, as you all, all you know, and the layer two information is always uh, considered as a frame. Right. So switch this switch will flood this frame to all the all the pieces. Let's say there are so many pieces. For example, a couple of PC is going to. So all all PC will receive this frame, right? Let's talk about this PC. What this PC will do? Correct. Let's say, let's talk about this PC because this frame will go to all the all the pieces connected to this particular switch. This PC is okay. I'm receiving one frame. Uh, the frame's destination is FFF means the broadcast layer to universal broadcast. So it is my responsibility to check further. Why? Because layer to universal broadcast doesn't not mean that it's not for me. Might be for me also, because there there is no specific mechanics. It is for all. It is broadcast. It means it is for all, all end host, or whatever uh, uh, end device. It might be switch. It might be router or whatever end device connected to this broadcast domain. Okay, this broadcast domain. So let's say one more point. There is a concept of VLAN, virtual local area network. So as I said, by default, this particular switch will be connected to one single broadcast domain only. Why? Because all ports belong to VLAN one only. Oh, sorry. VLAN one. Okay. So by default, all ports will connected to VLAN one only. So that's why we are saying that by default, one switch all port connected to same broadcast domain. So whatever broadcast comes or whatever traffic comes on once one interface, it will go to the all the interfaces. So let's say if I put this particular PC in the VLAN 2. Okay, this particular PC in VLAN 2. So what will happen whenever switch will receive anything on VLAN 1, it will not going to be forwarded to VLAN 2 interface. Why? Because it's a different domain. Okay, it's a different broadcast domain. So as a layer 3, we separate our different different networks with help of IP address, a logical address, and a subnet mask. Or you can say the network portion and the host portion separation. But as a layer two, we separate our domains with help of VLANs, virtual local area networks. Okay, so how things will go? So let's say I'm if I'm receiving any packet from this particular PC1. So this packet will not go to VLAN2 interface. It will go only and only to all the VLAN1 interface. So of course, this PC will not going to receive anything. So let's forget about this PC right now because it is not going to receiving anything. Correct. So let's let's think on this PC, this particular PC. So I'm receiving this uh, frame on this particular PC. Okay. Now this PC is okay. If it's a destination is FFF. It's my responsibility to open it because it is a layer to universal. It is not a specific. If specific, then I can match with my MAC address. If it's matching, that's fine. If it's not matching, I drop it. Right. If let's say there is a specific maker, it's not a universal to not layer to maker, right? So what PC will say, okay, let me check further because it is a layer, it's not specific. As I said, if, if it's specific, it must match with this PC's maker address, and then only the PC will go further and check the layer three information. Otherwise, simply the PC will drop the frame. Why? Because the maker address is D and I'm B, I my maker address is B, so it's not matching. I just simply drop the frame. Now this PC will open the remove the layer two information. Correct. So why it will remove the layer two information? Because it's a layer two uh, universal broadcast, and it is my responsibility to check for the. So let me remove this and check the layer three. Correct. But here, what exactly we are saying is, we don't have any layer three information, right? Because we are requesting for ARP. So please keep in mind, ARP does not use any IP services or any IP protocol. Or any IP encapsulation, it is only encapsulated immediately after layer two frame. Okay, so what what protocol it's saying? So PC say okay after L two there is only ARC protocols and in ARC protocol the request only and only for destination two, not for me. I am let's say three. I'm let's say I'm I'm dot three. Okay, so it's not for me. I will immediately drop my complete packet because it's not for me. Right. Now let's say this frame is arriving on the correct interface. Let's say I'm arriving on B and dot two. Right. 
So this PC will say, okay, it's again same process layer to broadcast of in blah blah, and then I will just remove layer to information. Okay, and then what I will do, I'll just check the R packet. What is request in R? Okay, so in request for R is dot two only, and I'm the only dot two. So it means I need to reply with my own MAC address. So ARP is basically requesting for particular destinations MAC address. Okay, so I'm just uh, simply replying with my MAC address on that ARP reply. So this is ARP reply only. Okay, this is ARP reply only. So in, the, in this ARP, I will create a new ARP packet, correct? And the source will be B and destinations A. So how this PC came to know the destination is A only because the once the original packet arrived on that particular PC, from that packet, as same with switch, this PC also started learning about the source MAC address. So I say okay, in order to reach dot one, I need to use MAC address A. So to start, you know, updating is R pack, updating is R packet, correct? R table or whatever we can see. Now this will reply. The reply will come to this particular PC, and what will happen? This PC also will start updating the this R table. So this is which is in PC or any end device like in the system, it might be Linux or maybe Windows or whatever maybe it's called R table. We are updating R table. So it's a, in order to reach dot two, I need to reach make address of B. But whenever any device reboots or reset or whatever power of power cut whatever. So R table will be deleted and we we'll start again sending the R request. Okay, so this is uh, like the helpful protocol R, uh, which will help us, you know, uh, get or we can say the getting R uh, MAC address table of each and every device in the within the same networks. And as you know, like in the in the layer two, in layer three, sorry, in, in, it, in it need to reach uh, default gateway, right? So layer three. So if my my layer three gateway is dot hundred. So for the same thing, I will do our request for uh, layer three dot hundred, correct, and that will store as a all for all networks. Okay, this will store as all networks because my default gateway. So this is basic protocol of our. Okay, so let's start now and moving towards the basic packet flow. How packet flow works in the network? So I'm just. Creating a simple network. Okay, so let's say this is my one network 192, 168, 1.1. Now we, I think, we started using the IP address. Okay. So two dot. Slash 24. Okay. And now is it this is my layer 3 device? So this is considered as a layer 3 device. So I think some layer 3 device, and this will be always a layer 2 switch, right? So let's just check. Uh, uh, already we have covered this. Uh, packet flow, but let's check how the end to end packet flow will work in our uh, network. Okay. So I'm I'm giving the network 192 1.0 24 year and 192.0 24 year. So how we'll consider this network as like a separate network is not belong to the same network with help of subnet mask. So subnet mask in our network is less 24 means if we calculate subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Correct. So two five five two four all ones. So two five five means my all bits are one. So it is binary, right? It's either zero or one. If all zero means my complete octet is zero. If my all bits one, my complete complete octet is a two five five. So what I will what how I will identify my network person and first person with the help of subnet mask. So whichever bits is my own bits, that will be considered as my network portions. Okay, so for example, let's say I'm giving very simple 10.0.0.1 slash 8 here. So my mask is 255.0.0. Okay, so let's say this is my mask is 255.0.0. Okay, so with help of subnet mask, I will say my first octet is only network portion. Okay, all other octet is my first portion. 
So I will just compare this, or you can say uh, match with this my IP address. So I will say okay, this my first octet, which belong belong to ten, it is my network person, and all other first first or, or sorry octet is the first person. So this way I will identify what is my network person, what is my first person. So if you check these two uh, networks, one ninety two one six one one zero slash twenty four and two dot zero two, correct. Now what will happen? This PC, let's say this PC one two, here also let's say one two. And I'm giving back address as of A, B. Here I'm giving it a C, D. And let's say you are giving X and Y MAC address. This is my MAC address. Okay. So this PC one and two will, if whenever they want to communicate with each other, they will simply say, okay, we belong to same network. Why? Because our three port, three octets of our IP address is matching with your destination, right? So let's say uh, how the packet flow will work here. So let's uh, just let me give that just here also. So now, uh, let's say my PC one wants to communicate with PC two. Okay, so I will initiate a frame. Correct. I will initiate the packet. So source will be dot one, and my destination is dot two. So how PC will will come to know that I need to reach default gateway, or only directly I can send uh, throughout the layer two, with the help of the destination IP address. Correct. So my source IP is one ninety two one six one dot one. Let's say this PC is one dot one. This PC is dot two. Correct. So my IP address is dot one. I need to reach dot two. So yes, one ninety two one six one dot two is matching with my own network range because my network person is three. One ninety two one six one. How I come to know my network person is three because of the subnet mask slash twenty four, and my destination network is also matching with this one, right? Dot two. One ninety two one six one dot two. So my source and destination is network person is matching. So that's why we belong to the same network. So in that case, I do not need to go default gateway. So what I'll say, my source is dot one, destination is dot two as a layer three, correct? So this is my packet here now. Layer two, layer three, source is one, destination is two, source make it as A, destination is make it as B. Correct? I do not need to reach this default gateway. I do not need to reach this part. I'm okay with my own part, on on network, on layer two network. Okay. So this frame will come to layer to switch and uh, layer to switch again will say, okay, I need to check the, uh, first of all, I need to learn this MAC address. So I, in future, I can use this MAC address and then I need, I need to check destination MAC address. I, I will never care about uh, layer three information because I always work on layer two framing, layer two information. Okay, dot two, oh, sorry, dot B, I need to go B. So switch will immediately send traffic to another port. Now let's say this PC wants to reach uh, two dot one, okay. So, if I say two dot one, so my packet will be like this. Okay, so let's say for example, this is my new packet, and I'm now, now I'm trying to reach uh, the something which is not in the same network, which is beyond my layer two boundary. Okay, this this way we'll consider as a, a different network. So my source is one, my destination is two. See. Layer three information will never change. Okay, it will uh, be it will be the same till reach the destination. So layer three information will be the same uh, until you, unless you're using a specific feature called net network address translation. Okay, otherwise the layer three information will never change. But whenever I say layer two information, let's say this is layer two information, this is layer three information. So my source is A. My destination will be X. Why X? Because I, I'm trying to reach a different network. So then what will happen? I will send this packet to switch. Switch will send this packet to router. Let's assume that switch has already learned the mechanism of router. It might be while flooding the uh, process of flooding. That time switch has learned this MAC address of router and switch will know, switch is aware of that. Okay, we need to reach dot X. I need to send traffic to this particular interface. Okay. Now router will receive this uh, frame. Router will say, okay, your destination is X. So it means you have reached as a layer two to your destination. This is your destination layer. for your data or for whatever packet or frame. This is your layer two. This is your destination. So what router will do? Router will remove the layer two frame. Okay, and we'll check the layer three information. Okay, so in the layer three, because now router has removed this layer two information. So it is gone. 
Okay, now what left is layer three. So my destination is two. So router will say, okay, let me check. Uh, sorry, my destination one nineteen was one dot two. So router will just check. Okay, let me check in my routing table. Now the rib will come into picture. Here the MAC address was there, correct? We were talking about MAC address table, but here in the router it will be the routing information table, or you can say routing table. So once the packet is arrived on this, oh sorry, frame the uh, frame arrived on this router. Router will say, okay, your destination is X. I will learn your source of MAC address. So uh, your source MAC address is A, and your source MAC address belong to IP address one dot one. Okay, so I'm learning this process. I'm learning and I'm putting in my R table. Right. And now your destination is X means you are receiving. You are received on or you arrived on the correct destination. Now let me delete this information completely because I do not need any more. Because as a layer two, your destination is finished. You're done. You, your job done. You, you reached uh, your destination. Now as a layer three, where you want to go? Okay, I want the router will say. Now the most important point here is router will only able to learn the MAC address. Okay, router will only able to learn the MAC address store in our table. The, the, the layer three information router do not need to learn. Why? Because router is already directly connected to this particular network, right? One is in one interface is connected to router also. And uh, we forgot to assign one default gateway as well. So let's say my default gateway is uh, I'm giving last IP address 254. Okay, so route. So I'm also belong to this same network. So I do not need to learn the source IP address because I'm only one who connected to this network as a 254 as the IP address. Now router will say, okay, your destination is a one I will say 2.0. Let me check in my routing table. Is something is there regarding this 2.0 or no? If nothing, nothing is there, I will just simply drop the packet because I don't have information where to go or where to send traffic. One I will say 2.0 says 24, right? So if if I don't have any information, how can I send you? Right. So I will simply drop the packet. That's it. Your your packet is end. Your journey is end. But let's say here in our scenario, in our diagram, router is already know about 2.0. How? Because we are assigning one IP address from that particular subnet or particular one I didn't say 2.0 subnet to router as well. So whenever I assign 250.254 to, to one of the router interface, the router immediately say, okay, on this particular interface, this network is directly connected. Okay, and immediately going to put this information into routing table. Of course, we are talking about global routing table because there are so many routing tables, VRF routing tables, global, and you can create multiple VRF. So that, this, is a, this is a different part. But right now we are talking about for global thing. So router will say, okay, uh, your destination is directly connected to me on this particular interface. So no worries, I will send you. So now what router will say, router will need to create a new layer to frame. Why? Because the, this frame is already gone. As a layer to this frame is already done. So router will say, okay, uh, router will also send R request if it's no, if you don't know, don't know about dot, uh, let's say dot one, one night you say two dot one. We should say two dot one. If router don't know about 2.1, then router immediately say, okay, let me check who is 2.1 in this side of network. Okay, now we are talking about two different networks. Okay, two different different broadcast domains. So that's why we say routing is always taking packets from one network and sending to another network. Right. So now what will happen here in the router? Router will immediately say, okay, 2.1 in this side or in this particular interface. Who is who, whoever has this IP address 2.1? Please send me your MAC address. Means in short, we are requesting for R. We are using the R protocol, right? Router is simply asking question. Whoever has the dot 2.1, please send me your MAC address. So I have some data for you, so I can send you with help of your MAC address. So immediately, uh, route uh, PC1 will reply, I am the dot one two dot one, and this is my MAC address C. Correct. So router will create the new frame here. Right, so router will say, okay, source is who will become source? Why? Okay, why is why why is a, your source? Because now as a layer two, router is sending packet to destination dot two dot one one ninety two one dot two dot one. So now router is your source as a layer two. Router will become the source. So source will be your Y, and destination will be your C. Because router has learned the MAC address through the ARM process. If router don't know, 
and let's say if, if this PC is shut down, okay, let's say this particular PC is shut down, then this PC will never reply. Okay, and if it's not replying, then R, okay, whatever R query you are sending in the local area, local area network inside the LAN, then you will never get reply. In that case, what we'll see in the router incomplete. Why? Because I'm not getting any reply from whom I'm asking. Right, one I say two dot one I'm asking, but he's not giving me reply. Either it's shut down or whatever in a way. So that's why I'm giving incomplete. If I'm giving incomplete, I will simply drop the traffic. That's it. Simple. The journey is end for that particular frame or whatever data. Okay. Now let's say this piece is replying. Router is uh, updating his R table. Correct. That uh, in order to reach two dot one, I need to uh, use a MAC address C. Okay. R is simply updating the Make, uh, sorry, R table. Now, this new packet, this sorry, this new frame, source is Y, destination is C, it will going to add to this packet, layer 3 packet. Okay, and this layer 2 plus layer 3 information will send from this particular interface. So, it will say, okay, in order to reach C, this is your interface and your data is arriving. Okay, so this is a like simple packet flow, how how packet will any originated from source and then how the in, in intermediate devices like layer two switch or maybe let's say layer three switch or router, how this uh, device will forward with help of layer two information plus layer three information. If you specifically talk about layer two switch, it will, it will only change the layer two information, correct? And if you specifically talk about layer three information, then router will always check the destination IP address. And then, uh, you know, router will destroy this packet, sorry, frame, whatever received on his uh, incoming interface, because as per layer two, the journey is end, because you cannot use the same layer two information beyond your layer three network. Okay, so this this uh, concept is limited to layer two only, MAC and response. In order to reach another network, there will be a different layer two frame, Okay. So, in short, you can say like each and every layer 3 hop, your layer 2 information will be destroyed and will be created new one for the new journey, or you can say new uh, subnet or segment. Okay, so that's why router calls, uh, like that's why we call router to use for routing, or attacking that packets from one network and sending to other network. Okay, so this is basic packet flow, and this is how like layer 2 and layer 3 uh, devices work. Uh, today's lecture, like uh, I have just kept is very simple. Uh, to, like, you know, just it is like uh, beginning of the series. I just want to keep it very simple and uh, short. So just giving the basic information about uh, layer two, layer three devices, how we configure, like uh, how we saw, how we packet will be forwarded from layer two and from layer three and difference between routing and switching. So how the switch will perform uh, forwarding from one interface to another interface by only looking at the layer two and how the routers, you know, perform forwarding from one interface to another or insert one network to the another network by looking at the layer three information or destinations. Okay. So this is our short lecture on like routing versus switching and uh, the basic packet flow in the network. So routers interface, each and every interface of the router, which always belongs to one network, or you can say one broadcast domain, Okay, you cannot have routers interface until unless you, you know, use a specific features, maybe let's say BDI or like that. So in that case, it will become a layered information and sorry, layer to interface, not a layered interface. We'll talk about all these features in, in further classes, uh, like uh, advanced classes. But until unless you configure specific feature, routers, each and every interface belong to a one network only or one broadcast domain only. And switch interface, if you not configure specifically or anything on switch, by default, all interface belong to a same broadcast domain. Okay, what whatever data comes from one interface will be forwarded to all the interface by default. If switch does not have information about the destination. Okay, it is not like router. Switch is not like router. Okay, I don't know this means I will drop the packet. No, not like this. Switch will always forward the unknown destination frames, but router will never forward. If router don't know destination, it will immediately drop the Okay, so this is basic fundamental difference between router and switch as well. Okay, so why route? So one more, one more important point, like why, why layer two switch is doing this way? 
that even if it does does not know about the destination, will it will do flooding and forward all the information because switch will need to learn this everything dynamically. All the destination MAC address and all the MAC address will belong to our network or same network or within network. Switch will need to learn this. That's why. That's why switch will always forward. Will never drop. If switch will start dropping, switch will never learn the MAC addresses within the same network. But router will never learn this dynamically. Apart from like if we learn, if we configure dynamic routing bro, there is kind of manual only because we are we are the who advertising the network. But by default, if router does know does not have this information, if it start flooding, then you just imagine like how much flood will do router every time, right? So that's why in the switch we do not need to put any information manually. It will learn this MAC address and the destination MAC address and whatever is belong to this network by dynamic process or we can say learning and flooding process. But in router, we need to guide our router that in order to reach this particular destination, you should send traffic to this particular direction or particular interface. Okay, router will never learn automatically. Yes, after configuring some maybe dynamic routing protocols and maybe both two routers sharing information with each other. And in, then, in, in that particular instance, yeah, that's fine that we are learning. But some of it is you're guiding your router, right? That, okay, you need to learn, uh, I'm enabling this protocol and you need to share this information with your neighbor, blah, blah. This, this will be like for further classes. I'm just giving you a simple uh, answer, like example about routing, how the router will do. So that's why switch, switch will never drop the frame if he does not know about the destination and router will always drop because router will need to guide and switch will need to learn automatically. Okay, so this is your uh, simple and short uh, lecture for today. And uh, as we move further, we will go beyond and beyond like in advance from basic to advanced, uh, like routing protocols. And tomorrow we'll start with, you know, connected routing. Okay, because the one kind of routing which does not require any specific configuration re, uh, related to routing, specifically routing. Okay, and then we'll start static and dynamic, how the routing protocols works between routers and how router will share information with each other. Okay, and we'll we'll go through some basic IP addressing also. That may, might be just we just go uh, go through refresher like IP address refresher. Okay. So tomorrow's lecture will uh, see every day lecture will be four to five thirty. Today uh, I will keep it very short to so just uh, comparing routers and switching process, and then packet flow within the network from reaching from source to destination. Yeah. Any question, team? Uh, one point here let's say we have two routers here. Uh, your voice is like I'm. I'm not able to properly. Sorry. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Tell me. Now let's say we have two routers. Mm -hmm. Even then, the R request should be sent, right? Let's say we have two, three routers in in between the two hosts. Mm -hmm. Even then, the R request will be sent, right? The R request will be sorry. R request will be sent irrespective of the number of routers in between, right? Let's say we have three or four routers in between. Even then, the R request will be sent. So, so let's say this is my router one connected to router two connected to router three like this. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. what is your question? Like the R request, yeah, so if I'm requesting is, this one. First is connected to router A and the first, uh, and the first is connected to router C. So, okay. See what will happen? Let's say now this router need to send traffic from, let's say these two directly connected interfaces. Okay. Here is like, let's say my X network, here is my Y network, correct? Okay. Now let's say if, I, if I'm requesting, so see within this segment or within this segment, subnet, the R request will be separate, different, correct? Yeah. Okay. Now from here, let's say if I'm sending this, so let, let me just, uh, you know, con configure all these different, different networks, okay? This is my networks. Okay. This is my, you can say a segments or you can say a lock layer to broadcast domains. So if I'm going, moving packet from here to there, then anyhow, I'm, I'm destroying my previous layer to information. Correct. Yep. Okay. So for this network, for this particular network, I need to create a new layer to information. 
right so for yeah. this the r frequency will be different yes correct the, the r no no that's fine r frequency r packet will be different but r frequency will be same that's what i meant uh the last one i'm not getting it might be my my microphone is a uh, something issue or no no our request our request will be sent but our packet will be different the source mac address will be different that is fine yeah 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 our packet yes correct for source and destination we're requesting is different so one, one question here what is see now it is let's say it's the ethernet interface what in case if it's a serial interface in serial interface our request will not be sent right sorry for what interface serial interface yeah no oh, serial interface there is no arp arp is only for ethernet networks Okay, ARP, ARP is only for Ethernet networks. It is not so for serial interfaces. So in the case, in the case, let's say there are the connectivity between the routers is a serial interface. How the communication will happen? So the, for serial connection, there will be different protocols. Okay, so okay. for serial connection, there will be different headers and different protocols. We are not going to use the, uh, you can say Ethernet uh, frame or Ethernet header or something like this. Okay, there's a diff different technology. Okay, so in that case, in the serial connection, I, I got your point, like when you're talking about this serial connection, what we usually you know refer as in the practice, right? This is like serial connection, yeah. maybe some uh, DSL connection or whatever, maybe, right? Yeah, yeah. So in that case, we are not using the Ethernet technology at all. There is there will be a different technology. You can say you can use HDLC or point to point. point, point. So you mean to say some encapsulation mechanism and through which it communicates? Yes, correct, correct. Each and every. So for example, if you talk about frame relay, okay. So in the frame relay also, there will be a different in the different encapsulation protocol. So just to based on routing, uh, just to based on the route, it will send the packet. It, it doesn't do the R packet. Yeah. See, whenever let's say this router for this router is deciding that I need to send this information to this particular interface, this particular interface, then I need to decide if it is Ethernet, I need to go for R. If it is a let's say serial, I need to use PPP or HDLC encapsulation. Okay. And let's say if I'm using frame relay, then I need to create a frame relay header, not R, not Ethernet. Sorry, not Ethernet header. You got it? See, yeah, uh, that's fine, uh, uh, Vishal. My point is point to point protocol or HDLC are just the encapsulation protocol. They don't decide what uh, how to learn the MAC address of the destination, right? They, mm -hmm. they, they just send the packet based on the route. Correct. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. So what ARP is applicable only in the case of uh, Ethernet part. Yes, exactly. ARP will be not be applicable on the point to point because we are not using Ethernet network at all there. Yeah, and one more thing is, uh, what are you told is fine. It's a really a good session. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you. And one more thing is, what about the proxy app? You didn't uh, touch base on the proxy app concept because that is the most important point. Uh, yeah, proxy app, uh, see, if, if you're okay with, uh, I'll keep it to tomorrow because I need to cover that proxy app with static routing. Because, you know, so many times uh, people get stuck with like, uh, so let me just let me just explain the proxy app. Okay. Because I, I have two scenarios where the proxy app will work. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got your point. Yes. So let's say for example, I have one router one connected to router two. Okay. Now, if my host is, let's say if my host is a MAC address, I, I will not talk about MAC address because it's now completely different network communication, right? So yeah. MAC address will not considerable, right? So what will happen? Let's say, for example, I'm I'm telling my router, I'm guiding my router here. Or or in in short, let's say this is my PC. My PC's IP address is dot one, but I'm not giving any uh, you know default getter to my PC. Okay, I'm just simply giving the IP address. Right. So what will happen? The PC say, okay, I don't have any default gateway. First of all. So in order to reach another network, like outside of my network, so how how I'll send the traffic? No, that's right. So proxy app is required only when you want to reach outside network, is it? Or within the same network as well? Sorry? No, is the proxy app required only when you when you only when you want to reach a outside network or also within the same network? That is my question. Yeah, yeah. Proxy app like yeah. See, forever example, if you are requesting something. And uh, if you don't have, like, let's say if you don't have your next stop or if you don't have default gate, or if you don't have any information how to reach out of my network or out of my layer to broadcast domain. Yeah. So in that case, I will simply do R for the destination, not for my default gateway. Okay. And if I do R for my destination, then whichever device comes first, like as it acting as a default gateway or whichever device has the information about the destination, they will, this device will be act as a proxy R and this device will tell simply to source that okay 
um, uh, seems like you are not having any information about default gateway, but I can be your, uh, you know, proxy app or I can be your default gateway and I can help you to reach your destination. Yeah, that's right. So can, can we have proxy app and default gateway in the same network? Uh, proxy ARP and default gateway in the same network uh, means I think like we can have, but just I want to confirm that. Only. Yeah, so mean to see, let's say if this device is the acting as a proxy ARP. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, and yeah, it, it must be in same network. Yeah, it must be in same network like this. Network. Yeah, so let's say now, so let's say now, for example, in, in this router, okay, in this router, this uh, I, I'll, I'll give one example. So this is my Z destination is Z. This is let's just consider as a layer 3 network. So let me let, let's say I'm guiding this router. This is my router, and I'm guiding this router in order to reach Z, send traffic from fast Ethernet 0 by 0. Oh, sorry, fast Ethernet 0 by 0. Okay, it means I'm not giving any next stop. Okay, that's why I said like uh, I can cover this proxy up to static route, uh, so it will be more uh, you know understandable. But that's fine. Uh, fast Ethernet 0 by 0, I'm just giving, I'm guiding my router. Okay, I'm, I'm telling my router, this router. Then in order to reach uh, Z, you need to send traffic to fast Ethernet zero by zero. I'm not sending to I'm I'm not saying my router to send the traffic to this particular next stop or particular IP address. Okay, I'm just telling my router to exit the traffic to fast Ethernet zero by zero. What will happen? This router will not does not have information about this default gateway. Correct? Router does not have information about this default gateway. So what router will say? Router will simply are for the destination, actual destination for Z. Okay, not for any kind of, you know, default gateway IP address or something. It will simply do R for Z, the destination, actual destination. Network. Why? Because it does not have next stop information or default gate information. Right? So, what will happen? This, this, uh, this request will come here to this router. This router will say, okay, it seems like uh, you don't know about the default gateway or whatever might be configuration. So what will happen? I will be, I will be your proxy app. as per your question. I will be your proxy app, or I will be act as your proxy app. So do one thing, use my MAC address. Okay. Use this MAC address, let's say my MAC address here is X1. So use this X1, X1 as a destination of your MAC address and send all traffic to me. And then I'll help you to reach the actual destination Z. No, no, that is right. That is a normal scenario, right? So my question is, uh, when the A, uh, let's say in the uh, in the network A, A to F, that uh, uh, initial network, initial router, uh -huh. I want to have another router apart from the default gateway. I want to have another router which is acting as a proxy. Uh, I want to have two someone routers. can help me, like if, if you're getting voice properly, or maybe something wrong with my laptop, or it's just like slow or it's because it's very hard to understand. Uh, just give me one minute. Just give me one minute, okay. Uh, can, yeah. Just a bit. That's my audio. Oh, sorry, my audio level is low. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what I'm saying is, instead of having a single router, I can I have a two routers? One having as a default gateway, other having a, other acting as a proxy for reaching another device. Uh, like. I'm not getting what you're trying to say. It's kind of design. Let, let's say, let's say, let's say, for, let's say I'm, I'm giving an example. Uh, let's say this, uh, this A box, A, A host is in 10.0.0.0 slash, uh, slash 8 network. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just uh, the same, same uh, scenario we can have. Nothing uh, big here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. going to go uh, clean scenario for you. Yeah. So here we are having 20.0.0.0 slash 8. Okay, so what I'm saying is, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm having another host, but that is reachable only via a proxy. That is not reachable, that is reachable only via the router. I'm having another host in 10.0.0.0, but it is not reachable via the switch. It is reachable only via the router. So in that case, I want to have a proxy along with the default gateway. Okay, so you want to keep one more. So option. what I'm saying is, in the same network, I'm having two routers. One router will act as a default host, another router will act as a proxy. Or and from the proxy up, I'll reach the same 10.0 network. Some some uh, some IP which is in 10.0 network. So I think you are talking about like uh, splitting your same network into two different subnetworks. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. So like uh, the same network, one a uh, few IPs are in the uh, are behind the router, and few IPs are here, present in the same host. Oh, same. Okay. I got a point. Like yeah. So let's say 
I, I'm just thinking uh, it will work or not, so I'm just uh, trying to understand. Nothing. Okay, okay. Uh, let, let's let let me draw the scenario with with uh, your uh, question. Okay, so just guide me. Uh, one router. This is your router. This is your router two. Uh, how this router will go? Where I where I connect these two routers? Uh, you are connecting behind the same switch. All are behind the same switch. Yeah. Okay, that is the same thing. Okay, yeah, now, a simple scenario, simple scenario, same switch, and we have one host here. Yeah. Okay. So this uh, this host is in ten dot zero dot zero zero slash uh, eight or slash whatever whatever it is. Eight. Okay. Eight. okay. And uh, what I'm doing is uh, what I'm doing is I have another host behind the one of the router. Okay. So I will give the first. I will give default gateway here. Yeah, default gateway. So this scenario is fine. Default gateway, and it will. If you want to come into the outside the network, you can use the default gateway, and you can come in. Correct. So okay. Before it's a default gateway, it will come in. So let's mm -hmm. say I have another host connected between dot two fifty three. Uh, behind the dot from here. Behind the router. Behind the router like this. Ah, exactly, exactly. So if there may be some switch connected or something like that. Yeah. And so then ten dot zero 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 some uh, IP. Ten dot. Uh, what subnet mask should I give? Uh, let's say slash 24 or whatever it is, whatever you want. Okay. Slash 24. So it will communicate, right? I think even when the proxy output is enabled, it should communicate. Uh, yes. Yes, exactly. What will happen? Let's say, for example, from this PC. Okay. From this PC, if I initiate any ping, ping to, let's say, let's say 100, dot 100. Okay, oh. so first of all, this network will say this is not my sorry, this is my same network, mm. right? It is not a different network, so I do not need to reach uh, default gateway, correct? Yeah. Okay. Now, if this if this packets will go as a friend, like like as a requesting dot hundred, I am requesting directly MAC address, not with help of the default gateway MAC address, correct? Yeah. Okay. Now, if this packet will reach here, right? So, what will happen? First of all, see, first of all, I'll, I will tell you one thing. These two interface, you cannot configure this way. No, that's what I'm saying. So, what I will do is, what I will do is the 10 dot uh, three, right? So, what I will do is I'll make it as slash uh, 24. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say I'm making like, uh, see, the yeah, 10 dot 0 dot 0 oh, okay. class, uh, slash 24. Like 24 again. Yeah, okay. slash 24. And that one, that, uh, that course I make it a set at 1.0 slash 24. Uh, okay, one minute. Okay, one minute. Just, I'll just show. Okay, uh, please help you, help me to get IP address here. 10.0 dot, dot, then. 10 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 uh, 10 dot 0 0 0 slash 24. Like this? Yeah, 0 slash 24 slash 24. The other, the other, the other interface you can continue just 10 dot 1 dot 0 0 slash 24. Space 24. Correct. Uh, and the host IP is 10 dot 1 dot uh, 0 dot 100. The host IP is 10 dot 1 dot 0 dot 100. Slash 8. No, no. The host IP at the top. 10 dot 1 dot 0 dot 100. Correct. Ah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, here it will communicate. Why? Because see, right now, if I'm talking about slash 8, okay, so whenever this PC will initiate traffic, what will say? Uh, the destination uh, 1.0.0. Or whatever, sorry, 100. It is my same network. So what I do, I request for ARP, correct? Yes. ARP will go here. This, whenever the router receives this ARP, okay, it will think that, okay, uh, it seems you don't have, uh, you're not putting as a default data information, but that destination is directly connected to me here in this part. Yeah. Okay, so do one thing, use my default gateway, make address, send all the traffic, and I will make you reach the destination, dot 100, one dot 100. Yeah. Okay, now yeah. let's say if I want to send traffic 10.0.0.0, dot, zero dot, zero dot, zero dot, uh, let's say 100, so now this PC will send to default gateway because both the source and destination are different network. You got the point? Yeah. 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 So this way the communication can work. 
with help of the proxy error. So, so that's what the proxy error and default gateway both will work together. That's what I was uh, trying to say. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks, sir. Thanks for Sorry, uh, actually, I think something wrong with my speaker or like this. No, my mic was, my, my was very low. So that's why okay. I increased my mic volume. And thanks. Oh, okay, okay. So are you clear or maybe you want to discuss this? No, no, I'm clear, I'm clear. So just I want to ensure everyone is on the same page. So that's why uh, that's why I asked about that uh, serial link and uh, this to uh, proxy or proxy. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you for asking. Uh, team, anybody has any question? Oh, I'm good, okay. Okay, so we'll stop here and we'll tomorrow we'll start uh, with the uh, very basic routing like uh, connected versus static versus dynamic routing. And then we'll go forward uh, with uh, the end user, like we'll start practicing static. Uh, and most important, our uh, lecture series will be more focused on approach. How we'll take uh, approach to configure basic uh, uh, requirement from customer end. Right, let's say if any, there is any questions, uh, this comes or maybe they will ask some configuration help or basic config because basically we support uh, basic configuration assistance and then mostly focus on troubleshooting approach. How will troubleshoot a particular network? Okay, uh, along with uh, you will get all basic information. Let's say if you are talking about EIGRP, then we'll basically go through the EIGRP theory. And then we start uh, configuration help and troubleshooting approach. Okay, uh, team, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate you all people join, and uh, I hope this is informative. Uh, so many things. We'll see you tomorrow uh, for PM. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Vishal. Thank you, Vishal. Thanks, Vishal. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Vishal.